Guys, we have a mission on our hands. We have to get from Ferrari in Zimbabwe up to Dar es Salaam in five days. We're going to meet my brother and my best buddy Phil in Tanzania. They're joining us on the road for a month. So that's 2,500 kilometers that we need to cover across five days, crossing four countries and various border crossings and some rough terrain along the way. Stay tuned for this one. That's right, guys. We have a long journey ahead of us. Three border crossings, rough roads, and not a lot of time. Will we get to Dar es Salaam in time to meet Charlie and Phil? You'll have to watch the video and find out. Let's go. The first leg of our journey was from Harare to the Mozambican border, roughly 238 kilometers. So that's us scampered out of Zimbabwe and that was really really quick, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes I think. And now let's see what the most of the inside is going to be like. Thank you, goodbye. Bye. Cheers. Finally, we have got through the passport process of entering back into Mozambique. That took about two hours. We were waiting for a while for them to like do all the paperwork and everything. And Harry's just gone off to pay our tax that we need to get sorted, but we're all stamped in, got all the documents that we need. And hopefully from now on, it should be a bit quite easy just driving through Mozambique. And then we've got another border crossing being stamped out of Mozambique, stamped back into Malawi. And then the same again when we go into Tanzania. So yeah, that's actually something that we haven't quite factored in when we thought about how long this journey would take from Harare to Dar es Salaam, is that you're funny about for quite a lot of time when you're at a border. But anyhow, we've uh, got through this one. I need two more of this to go. Crossing the border into Mozambique took us hours. Once we were through, we drove another 144 kilometers to the Kukatana camp, just outside of Tet. So we've just arrived at camp for the first night in, what, over a month? Yep. Um, in Tet. So we pushed and did, I don't know, nearly 300 miles today. The new suspension performed really well, I thought. So yeah, time to pop the roof for the first time and get back into camping mode. There's a lovely swimming pool here, so I mean we're drenched with sweat from that drive. It's been really hot today. So I think we're going to get set up and probably go and jump in that swimming pool. Haven't used those muscles in a while. <laughs> Our friend Yara, who we were staying with in Harare, um, has got a chain of cafes called the Scotch Cart and before we left she kind of gave us some ginger shots. So we're so, really living it up here, doing our first shot of the second or is this the third part of the trip? I guess this could be the third part of the trip. Ooh. <coughs> Proper that. Let's go jump in the pool. After a dip in the pool, we made a quick dinner and then headed to bed.
Morning guys, we've just made our coffees and we've packed the car up. We're getting ready to head out from this lovely campsite. Didn't get much below 30 degrees the whole night last no. night, so. I think it's been the hottest day and night that I've, we've I've ever experienced. Yeah. yeah. You're just sweating, standing still. So the plan for today is we've got about two, three hours to the Malawian border. Yep. Cross the border of Malawi and then make our way up Lake Malawi. I don't know exactly how far we get today. How, depending on how the border is. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers to day two on this epic mission to Tanzania. To Tanzania. Let's go. So we've heard in Malawi it can be quite difficult to get fuel, so I'm going to fill up the jerry can as well, just while we can pay for fuel with card. So guys, as you saw there, we uh, went to fill up and none of my cards were working at the petrol station. Um, we've got visas prepaid cards, master cards, and none of them were working. So I had to go on a little run around, around town to go to the cash points. And we tried four or five different cash points. And in the end, one of the cash points took my Monzo card. So if that doesn't say something about what card to take with you when you go traveling, I am a real um, believer in Monzo. I think they're brilliant. But yeah, that was pretty stressful. Anyway, we managed to get the cash out. We paid for our fuel. Yeah, one thing, I guess, just carry cash. Carry cash, you have to have it, you really do. So. so we're approaching the border to Malawi now. And it's amazing how whenever we come close to a border, the scenery seems to completely change from country to country. And I can see ahead that it's way more mountainous in Malawi. Um, it's quite stunning actually. I'm really excited to cross into another country. stamped out of Mozambique and that was very quick and easy and now we are making our way towards the Malawi border. It's actually a little bit of a drive from where you get stamped out of Mozambique to actually where the border post is in Malawi here. Um, I'll put on the screen the name of the borders that we have passed through today. The last process, hopefully. We are through into uh, Malawi. It did take a while, but it was a much more pleasant experience than um, yesterday coming into Mozambique again. Everybody had a job and they were doing their job. It did take a while, but not in the grand scheme of things, not that long. So yeah, we've probably got, I don't know, three hours or something to get to where we're going, maybe four. Yeah, another country. Yeah. Let's see what Malawi looks like. I swiped, yeah. I tapped, I said, oh, can I tap? Because they do cards here. And there's an option for contactless. So I tapped my card and they went, oh. and they were like, ah. they have never seen it before. Yeah.
We arrived at the Cool Runnings campsite in Salima. First things first, a well-deserved G&T. So after quite a long day of driving and border crossings, yeah. we have made it to Lake Malawi. And how beautiful is that? Almost like Bill and Kulos, isn't it? Feels like Bill and Kulos a bit, yeah. Fishing yeah. boats and fishermen coming in. But yeah, the view is awesome. stunning, there's just mountains all around the lake. Have a look. On day three, we made our way from Salima to the Ingala Beach Lodge. So guys, we are giving you and us a break from the driving. Um, we did four or so hours this morning and we've ended up at this beautiful campsite. I think it's called Ing Ingala Beach Lodge on the lake shore um, of Lake Malawi. And it, it kind of feels like a little bit of a paradise island, to be honest. Anyway, we have some new equipment to hopefully make our lives a little bit easier. And that is a Starlink. So we've used this Starlink a couple of times um, so far and I've noticed that it does, running it off of um, 240 volts, which is what the router runs from currently. It uses quite a lot of power and although our setup will probably run it for, I'd say probably five or six hours, the problem is we could run it five or six hours and then we'd be out of power. So if we leave it, if we park up of an evening and have the Starlink on, in the morning we'll wake up with, uh, with no power. So today we want to test with our Red Arc solar blanket we're parked in the shade so our fixed solar panel is in the shade but if we put our blanket out into the sun the sun's quite strong today and not much cloud cover is our solar going to run the starlink and keep the battery topped up at 100 percent which it is at the moment so we're going to test that today um, we're showing 98 percent charged now i'm going to throw the blanket out onto the beach and then connect the Starlink up and see what we've got. So that's showing 175 watts um, worth of solar at the moment. That's a 230 watt panel, so I think I need to rearrange it slightly, but um, we're getting a reading of 12.2 amps um, of worth of power from the panel and the Starlink tends to, with the inverter on and powering it, tends to sit at around 10 amps from what we've seen. So it's looking good at the moment. So I'll plug in the router. I'll actually plug in the Starlink uh, dish as well before we turn it on. Go and place the dish out on the beach somewhere where it's got a clear view of the sky. Okay, now the dish is out where we want it, I'm going to turn the inverter on. Wait for it to click on. So it's showing the Starlink is pulling currently 9.7 amps and we're still charging by 11. So at the moment we can run that without um, draining any battery power and actually still keeping our batteries topped up. And this is our Manager 30, is how much charge is putting into either the battery or the accessories. So currently we're using 6.4 amps and 3.5 or so is going back into the battery.
What have you made? Uh, roasted curried butternut with couscous. Oh, they? I know, never been done before. So this is probably, we won't make it to the border of Tanzania today, it's about eight hours to the border and then you know what border crossings are like, it could be another two or three hours there. So we're heading to Mizuzu um, where hopefully we'll be able to get some US dollars for the next border crossing because we've run out of cash uh, and that's two and a half hours away, so that's where we're heading. Day five was a long day. We spent five hours at the Tanzanian border. Once we were through, we made our way to a very beautiful campsite. Morning guys, we've just hit the road from the Utungule Coffee Lodge, I hope I'm saying that right. And um, we had a really, really lovely stay there. It's such a magical place, um, the views and everything, and just, yeah, really, really nice. And I had a lovely, good cup of coffee this morning and actually bought some beans, which is quite exciting to have some really nice coffee beans. We haven't had those in a while. So our plan for today is we've got about 10 hours of driving. We're gonna try and get at least half of the journey from here to Dar es Salaam done today. So we're gonna see how it goes. We have heard from multiple people that the drive that we're about to do is slow going. The roads are really rough. There's lots of trucks, you can't really overtake. It's about 50 k's per hour kind of the whole way. So we'll see how far we get. We'll try and do our best today. Let's see how it goes. So a little update for you on our journey to Dar es Salaam direction anyway, we're not gonna make it there today. It's been slow. The roads are perfect, they're the best tarmac we've seen the whole trip, but it's full of lorries and there's roadblocks every 5Ks or something like that and every policeman wants to pull you over and either charge you for something or ask you what football team you support. So it's slow going. Um, Yes, we're going to probably get into camp quite late tonight. But we're making progress, so it's not all bad. We've made it to camp for the evening, guys, after, what, 10 hours? Longer. We left it before seven didn't we oh so it's been like 11 or 12 hours on the road long day <laughs> really long day but we're here we're at the tan swift lodge I think yeah. it's called, which is nice i mean to be honest we just needed somewhere to park up and relax and they've actually got a nice big pool so harry's just getting changed now <laughs> so we're gonna go over there refresh in the pool and uh, that's about as far as we've got for the evening so far
so this is the final day of driving we've actually left on when we said we were going to this morning which is the reason for that was because it was so hot last night that I just had to get out of bed at five o'clock this morning probably I think it was the hottest night do you think it was Chloe hottest night so far anyway we've made a coffee with the fresh beans from the Utilingi Utilingi uh, coffee lodge and we're gonna get on the road we've got three hours to our first stop and then it's probably another three after that so we're getting there So we're probably three hours out from the airport. Um, so looking like we're gonna make it uh, on time to pick up Charlie and Phil. They don't know that. Um, not sure if I've said that already. We, we've told them we're gonna be probably two days still. So it'll be a nice surprise for them when they come through arrivals to see us there, our sweaty mugs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what a hell of a journey this has been. I mean, these roads, have just been something else. They really have. So we are into Dar es Salaam city and we've hit loads of traffic. There's just trucks, tuk-tuks, bikes everywhere. But we're about 15 minutes away from the airport and we're actually going to get there early so we're going to have some time to, I don't know, We're about chill. 15 minutes away from 10 foot in front of us. I'm looking at the sat -nav. <laughs> <laughs> We're seven kilometres away from the airport. It might take us three hours. But we're listening to some... The lights are turned way down low. Christmas music. Anyway, we'll show you when we see the guys. We've made it. We've made it. To the airport, 2,500 plus kilometers later, and we're here. 14,000 fines. <laughs> yep, about that. <sighs> Finally. Let's hope this airport is air conditioned. <laughs> Hopefully they have a shower, because I am sopping wet. Lovely. How are you, dude? All right. Oh. Oh, yeah. You can set the back in the workshop first, I know, yeah, doing a bit of shelving. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get dusty. The past six days have been pretty exhausting, but we've actually really enjoyed the experience. This was a mission. We needed to get to Dar es Salaam in time to meet Harry's brother and best buddy, and we did it. We're so excited to have Charlie and Phil with us and can't wait to share what we got up to during their month long trip with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe because it really supports our channel and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you to our Patreons. If you would like to join our Patreon community, please visit the link in the description box.